Did Arizona State set Jaden Daniels up to fail? It certainly seems that way, according to one person very close to Daniels. We're going to talk about that on this edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. Our Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to this edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Thank you guys so much for making us your first listen of the day. Remember, this podcast is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, if you would like to check us out on a visual platform. But, of course, wherever you do get those podcasts, make sure that you hit like and subscribe. And also turn on those notifications so you get an update every time we post new content, which is Monday through Friday. If you want to stay in touch with everything Arizona State, on Twitter, go ahead and follow me at RichieBrads36. Follow the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Levels. And follow all the content that I pump out for Sports Illustrated at All Sun Levels. You follow all three, you're going to be in touch with everything that's going on with the Sun Devils all the time. Interesting conversation topic today. Something I didn't think we were going to need to talk about because I don't, I don't know how I feel about this opinion, but... It, it certainly is out there. Now, everyone has their own feelings about Jaden Daniels. He was a three-year starter for Arizona State, the first ever true freshman to start for the program. The team stuck by his side through thick and thin, ups and the downs. There were definitely more ups than there were downs. And I feel like people kind of get lost in what was a down 2021 season and forget how good Jaden was his first two years. But the recency bias, unfortunately, plagues everyone's memories and makes it makes us think that he was a very bad quarterback for Arizona State. And then he kind of spurns the program a little bit by saying he's going to be coming back and then ultimately deciding to transfer just a few short months later. And I mean, look, I'm pro player. I'm I'm all here for bettering yourself for your career, whether that's NIL opportunities or it's to get yourself ready for your professional career which certainly seems like it both could have been the case for Jaden Daniels. And he ends up deciding to go to LSU. So leaves a bad taste in the mouth of Arizona state fans and students and boosters. And it's understandable. You know, we, we put a lot of faith in this guy. We got invested in this guy. He told us he was coming back and then he backed out on it. I mean, that's a big deal. Whether or not you think it's right, wrong, or indifferent, that is a big deal. And that that is a gut, a gut punch. Like, I was very caught off guard when it happened, and I was very upset. You can go back on some of the old episodes. In fact, when me and my former co-host, Connor Drios, broke this down, I mean, I was heartbroken. I was really upset that Jaden was gone. I thought the season was over before they were able to bring in Emory Jones and kind of rally the troops. But... Back to the point at hand, if there's one thing I feel ASU did do for Jaden Daniels, it was place him in a position to succeed. Now, did they get him five-star players? No, but that's not something that Arizona State has ever done very well. Did they give him the best coaching staff? Probably not, but they still definitely catered an offense to his strengths. But with that in mind, Regina Jackson, who is Jaden Daniels' mother, was on record on some kind of like Twitter live, I think. Like it, it, it was like one of those Twitter spaces with a bunch of LSU people. And she basically almost pretty much ripped the program and said something along the lines of, you know, they they didn't set him up to succeed. Her actual quote was. He needs a team to help him. That's a very interesting argument to me. And I'm going to spend the episode breaking it down because I could not disagree anymore with you, Miss Jackson. So starting off, to her credit, this is a very devoted mother. Absolutely love the way that she cares for her son. You, you love when you see parents that are involved. You love when they are going to back up their kid no matter what. Like, Absolutely no hate towards Miss Jackson 
for all of this. I am very supportive of her support of her son. I just don't agree with this opinion personally. So taking a look at the quote. Now, I'm going to read the quote here. Feel free. I will be retweeting this on the Twitter page. And you can check it out for yourself as well. At Devil Train Pod was able to take the clip from this little Twitter space. This is the quote provided by AZ Central. Here it is. At the end of the day, he's putting in the extra work. I tell you one thing. He's probably worked out with his quarterback coach more that more that he's been at LSU than he did when he was at Arizona State, and that's in California. He's dedicated. He's devoted. We hear it. I read it all, and I like and like I tell him, the perception is reality. So if they say you are inaccurate, we're going to work on it. I can tell you right now, everybody he's worked with, no one saying that things. No one saying the things that we see, that we've seen. It all goes down to chemistry. A quarterback has to have chemistry with their team. You see the best quarterbacks. Tom Brady is not without good chemistry with his receivers. He's going to put the ball out there, but if they are running the wrong routes and if they are doing stuff, what is he supposed to do, you know? And the line, he does. He don't want to run. He's been a pack. He's been a Pac-12 line that just collapsed, you know? They're good kids, great kids, and we love them all, but he's not going to sit there and take 60 sacks, guys. At one point, he's not going to get up, and I can tell you, for him being wiry, you can ask Florida State, and you can ask Washington, and you can ask all these people. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. Michigan State, you know he turned back around as a true freshman. So kind of dissecting a little bit of those comments there. It feels like you're really shifting the blame on everybody except Jaden Daniels. Like blaming the receivers. That's interesting to me. Blaming the offensive line. Also interesting to me. Like here's the thing, you know, Jaden Daniels just posted a, career best completion percentage. He led the Pac-12 this past season. It was like 65% somewhere in that ballpark range. He he was a very accurate quarterback last year. There's no denying that. But he has had to work on it throughout his career. Prior to this season, he was like a sub-60% passer. And like, it's not for a lack of players He played with Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk was a first-round pick in the NFL. He played with Frank Darby. Frank Darby is in the NFL currently. He he was throwing to Curtis Hodges, who is in the NFL. He was throwing to Rashad White. He was a third-round pick in the NFL. Like, it's not for a lack of targets. It's not like he was throwing to Richie Bradshaw out there. No, he had legitimate weapons. But somehow we're shifting the focus of the blame to them looking at the offensive line. Is it a great offensive line? No, but again, two players, Kellen Deesh and Donovan West are in the NFL. Now, uh, Ladarius Henderson is likely going to be in the NFL next year. The Sun Devils have definitely been able to put a cast around him and a good supporting cast. Again, Joe Schmo is not out there. There's, there are quality players that Jaden Daniels is playing with. And yet it's their fault. Like, you do need to assume some responsibility. You know, Jaden Daniels threw 10 touchdowns to 10 interceptions last year. Yes, there were a couple interceptions that weren't his fault, but you don't throw the same amount of interceptions to touchdowns without having struggles. And Jaden has worked on it. And I believe that thoroughly. You know, you kind of need to when you're going from a Pac-12 team to an SEC team. You need to be able to step that game up. So I appreciate her comment when she says that he's working with a quarterback coach. It's it's very interesting to me, the quote that says, he's probably worked out with his quarterback coach more at, at LSU than he was at ASU. Why why is that? Why, why is that something that you're using against ASU in these comments? It, it just... The way that this was all kind of shelled out comes across as a shot to Arizona State. And I'm going to dissect these comments a little bit more 
throughout the remainder of the podcast, we are going to go ahead and hop into our first break we are real quick here. When we return, we're getting right back in this conversation and the rest of my opinions on it. This is the Locked on Sun Levels podcast. You're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks. A few becomes too many. As the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride. Nah, you live nearby. You can make it home, okay? It's no big deal. What are the odds you'll get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that can happen? Your insurance goes up, you lose your license, you lose your job, you total your car, you kill someone. Everybody knows the risks of drunk driving. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. Thank you guys, as always, for making the Locked On Sun your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. Back into our conversation now. Getting back to the comments, I I can understand Regina's concern for the program. And I feel like right now this might be a situation of the grass is greener on the other side. Let's look at the main differences between LSU and ASU. The first main difference, the conference. ASU plays in the Pac-12, and they're not, they are not the tip of the iceberg for the Pac-12. That's Oregon. That's USC. He's going to LSU now, which is the SEC, which is already better than the Pac-12, but he's going to LSU, which is in that caliber of an Alabama, of a Georgia, so on and so forth. Let's remember LSU won a national championship just a few short seasons ago, too. Yes, that was a great team, and there has been a lot of departures since then, and LSU has taken a step back significantly. But that is still a better team than what Arizona State has. Looking at the team, they've got a receiver, Kayshawn Boutte, who is looking like a future NFL guy. I mean, if you are big in the NFL draft and you're already looking at 2023 mocks, you will notice that Kayshawn Boutte is one of the guys who's being mocked in the first round pretty consistently, sometimes being mocked as the number one receiver off the board. Yeah, that's going to be a very nice upgrade over Ricky Pearsall and L.B. Bunkley Shelton that he was throwing to last year. He's got other weapons, too. He's got Tyrion Davis-Price in the backfield. He's coming off a 1,000-yard rushing season for the program. He's got uh, Jare Jenkins, who's going into his senior season. He's got Jack Beck, who's going into his senior season. There's a lot of familiarity on this team that he's got the opportunity to work with now. He's got a better coach, too, if we're just being frank. You argue that Brian Kelly is a Hall of Fame college football head coach. He is the winningest coach in Notre Dame history. He's coming to the SEC now. They're hoping that he can get them back on the right track to winning national championships that they were just in a couple of years ago. And he can definitely get Jaden Daniels in a great position to succeed with great coaching and much higher level in talent. I just don't get how that's ASU's fault, though. I I have said this many, many times. The expectations at Arizona State have never been national championships. It just, it, it never has been. It likely never will be. They're just not that program, and that's okay. But when you commit to Arizona State, you know that. You know that your expectation is not a 15-0 and season and winning a national championship and being Heisman Trophy candidates th- littered throughout the roster. That's just not Arizona State. That's not a bad thing, but you need to realize that. So when you're coming to Arizona State, a very highly touted player too. Jaden Daniels is a very, very good prospect, a high-end four-star prospect out of California. He ends up coming to Arizona State and becomes a, a, a the first ever starting true freshman for the team. Can we talk about how big a deal that is to go to a program that is pretty storied, all things considered, and has had some pretty good quarterbacks come through the program, but 
Jaden Daniels, the first ever true freshman to start, but I feel like that kind of gets washed away. And, you know, he was pretty good as a freshman, 17 touchdowns of five or uh, two interceptions. Great quarterback. And part of that is because he had the weapons, you know, did his weapons get worse across the years? Yes, they did. But so did his play. And if you are going to tell me that Jaden Daniels play got worse because his weapons got worse, then I'm not, I'm not entirely sure that this is a compliment to Jaden Daniels at this point. So yes, he's got better weapons at LSU. He's got no excuses not to be better. He's working with his quarterback coach a lot more. He's in a position to succeed. Again, the, the comment that just sticks out to me, he needs a team to help him. If he is that good, how come he can't do it by himself? Look, I'm not a quarterback wins or a stat guy. It's not true at all. But when you want to start making these kind of arguments and these kind of jabs and saying that you need a team to help you win, but yet you want to talk about how it's never their fault. How come, how come they're not capable of uplifting that talent? How come we can't hold Jaden Daniels accountable? Why is it that it's ASU's responsibility to get five-star players next to Jaden Daniels? If Jaden Daniels were that good, don't you think five-star players would want to come to ASU to play with him? You think it's a coincidence that Alabama consistently gets the best recruits every year? Now there's a lot of factors that play into it, but I mean, look at the the quarterback play. For the longest time, it was mediocre at best, and they were they were getting guys in there, but eventually, when they started getting good quarterbacks, holy cow! You know, now you've got Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs and Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle and uh, Jameson Williams transfers and John Mechie plays there. It, it's just consistently getting better and better talent at that receiver position because the quarterbacks were better. It just feels like if Jaden were that good, then guys would have wanted to come play with him. And we'll find out this year. I just really don't like this pointed comment that's aimed at Arizona state. And I've got some more thoughts that I'm going to get to in just a moment before we close out this episode, we're going to go ahead and hop into our final break. When we return, I got some closing thoughts. This is the locked on son of us podcast. As always guys, make sure that you are subscribed to the locked on pack 12 podcast hosted by my good friend, Spencer McLaughlin, get all your pack 12 news, in 30 minutes or less, and stay in touch with everything that's going on in the Pac-12. Just like Lock on Sun Levels, it's free and available on all platforms, so make that your second listen of the day. Rant time. Time for a rant. You're complaining that Arizona State did not put a team around Jane Daniels. We had a first-round wide receiver. We have two offensive linemen that are in the NFL. You have another receiver that's in the NFL. You have a running back that's in the NFL. You have plenty of guys littered that he has played with that are either on NFL teams or they have maybe transferred to big name programs and like Ricky Pearsall and, and Chip Trianum. Now, admittedly, Trianum is a linebacker, but nonetheless, the point is Jaden has played with good players. And it's not for a lack of trying. Maybe kind of a, a shady comment, but Arizona State really tried to do everything that they could to put together a good team around Jaden. And unfortunately, they just weren't able to. Again, it wasn't for a lack of trying, but I just don't like how this all gets aimed at Arizona State and it's their fault. That's not true. It just isn't. Right, wrong, or indifferent. 
Jaden is a great kid. I love Jaden Daniels. I'm rooting for him to succeed. I cannot preface that enough. I personally do not appreciate the comments that he essentially was not given a team to succeed. And sure, maybe, admittedly, maybe I'm reading a little too much into it. Maybe this isn't what she was trying to say, but it certainly comes across that way. And it's very hard to not think that with the way that she kind of talked about the situation. And she certainly rubbed some Sun Devil fans the wrong way as well. If you look at that tweet, again, that was shared by at Devil Train Pod with that little two-minute clip from that little Twitter space, you can see the comments. There's a lot of angry Arizona State fans that definitely feel like she was maybe taking some pointed jabs. You also have people who were supporting her. I get both sides of the argument. Yes, ASU could have done better. But I don't like that it just feels like we're taking the faults of Jaden Daniels and redirecting it at Arizona state. And now we're going and saying that, Oh, well, he's working with his quarterback coach more than he ever has in his entire career. Well, why wasn't he doing that in the first place? Why wasn't he doing that at Arizona state? Why is that Arizona state's fault? Why, why is, why is that on us that Jaden Daniels is now going to be trying harder than he's tried before? That doesn't make sense to me. There's a lot of things I feel like just don't add up here. I'm not really sure. All in all, I guess I'll kind of leave it up to you guys. Do you think Arizona State set Jaden Daniels up to fail? Do you think Arizona State did not put a good enough supporting cast around Jaden Daniels? Do you think that Jaden Daniels needs a team to win? Let me know. Sound off in the comments on YouTube. Uh, leave a leave a comment wherever you get your podcast. Hit me up on Twitter. Let me know what you guys think. I, I would love to know your guys' opinion on this. I have shared my thoughts. It It's a conversation to be had. It's something that we're going to be talking about in 2022. Maybe 2023 if Jaden Daniels does opt to play one more year in college because he, he does have that COVID eligibility here. We'll wait and see and find out, but that's just my thoughts on the situation. Uh, no disrespect to Regina Jackson whatsoever. Again, I absolutely love how passionate she is about her son. She should be because I think he's a great football player. He just had a down year. I think his track record speaks much more highly about him than what was shown off in 2021. But, you know, Jaden has to take some responsibility. That's just my bottom line. But that's going to go ahead and wrap up this edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. As always, thank you guys so much for making us your first listen of the day. Remember, we're free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, if you'd like to check us out on a visual platform. Wherever you do get those podcasts, though, make sure you hit like and subscribe and turn on those notifications so you get an update every time we post new content, which is Monday through Friday. Also, if you want to stay in touch with everything Arizona State, follow me on Twitter. You can find me at RichieBrads36. You can also find the podcast at LO underscore Sun Levels. And you can follow all my content for Sports Illustrated at All Sun Levels. Follow all three of them. You'll never be out of touch with anything that's going on with the Arizona State Sun Levels. But that wraps up this edition of the podcast. So until next time, guys, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Levels.